The aim of this video is to demonstrate how to use Asalia's Murmur of Rage Overload to farm kill bonus as part of item leveling, and also how to use Kilia and Asalia's Supreme Curry combo skill to help clog both of their revenge gauges. Now, thank you to GameFAQ's user Alpha Lampo for this build idea. Now, if you don't want to get into the intricacies of how item leveling works, and you just want to repeat one method the entire time, this method will work just fine for that. Now, I will assume that you already have max subclasses for Rosalia, because you will want the stats from that to make her strong enough for this. But for other units, I will try to cover which subclasses you need for various abilities. Now, the general idea of this is that you want to use Isalia's Murmur of Rage Overload to hit the entire map. But to do that, we need to get her into revenge mode. And what we're going to do is use the Supreme Curry combo skill, which also counts as a support skill, with the common ability Never Give Up from Asagi, which allows you to use a combo skill an additional three times for four casts total, and Twin Heads, which uh, is the unique ability of Twin Dragons, and if you don't move this allows you to cast again, so we get five casts total. And then with Veteran Support, which is a common ability of Petta, which you can turn into a scroll on any difficulty of Carowald, um, you get to act again after using support skills. So after casting Supreme Curry five times, you can cast it another five times for ten casts total. And with Tension Booster, which is a common ability of Professor, but I believe it's the three-star common ability, each of those casts will give 10% revenge gauge to the targets. In this case, both Kilia and Usalia are targets of it, so it'll give both of them 10% revenge gauge 10 times for a full revenge gauge. Now, you could remove the need for twin heads by having revenge booster weapons on each of them, such as items like an item like this for Usalia. Kelia also has the medical insertion unique ability of uh, from the Professor subclass, and this doubles the effect of buffs. And this works with the buff, uh, the stat buff part of Supreme Curry, and also works with buffs from Chemical Reaction, which is another common ability from Professor. This time, I believe the two-star common ability. And this will give a 30% buff to a random stat that wasn't already buffed. With the 10 casts of uh, Supreme Curry, all the other stats will get buffed by 30%, which will be doubled to 60%. And it also works with actual buff spells, like these, which at plus 4 or higher, which is what's required for 50%, will be doubled to the cap of 100%. Now, unfortunately, the buff from Chemical Reaction doesn't actually stack with normal buff spells, whereas the attack buff from Supreme Curry does, so this might this might influence your weapon choice based on, um, based on the fact it's easier to... Uh, you don't need to worry as much about stats of using attack, because uh, Supreme Curry giving... Uh, so Supreme Curry giving an attack buff that actually stacks with plus percent stats and with buff spells. However, I'm actually going to be going with int based weapons because it's convenient to buff int because we want to be next to um, Christo and Christo's superlative ally unique ability takes 20% of his int and adds that to the attacking stats, regardless of which stats are being used, of adjacent allies. And by using int-based weapons, we can buff Kilia, Christo, and Isalia in a single buff spell, rather than needing different buffs for different units. Now, because Kilia's overload allows him to take initial two actions, he can use his main action for putting people into revenge mode and additional actions for casting buff spells. In fact, he can use 
one of those tokens for the buff spells and another action for attacking things, which is why we have Assault Attack, which is the unique ability of the Valkyrie subclass. This allows him to deal more damage the further he moves. I've already mentioned Never Give Up Intention Booster. Explorer is a common ability of the Pirate subclass, and I believe this is again a 3 star ability. And this increases the chance of Mystery Rooms appearing as long as this unit is deployed. Veteran Support again is from Peta. Critical Point is also a common ability of Peta, and this is my choice to use. This increases critical damage to uh, units you're not adjacent to. Being in revenge mode gives you 100% critical rate, and while this won't work with Macrocosm because that attack was adjacent to enemies, it will work with Avidia Holy Water or Squad Attack. Equipment wise, uh, staff for increased um, spell ring, including buff spells, and also to make attacks int based so that it's so that we can. Uh, buff Killia's Int, so we can buff uh, Int on Killia, Christo, and Usalia at once. We have a level 100, level 100 professional for extra critical damage, and we have movement gear, including an actual gear. Killia doesn't actually need the teleporting movement from this because he gets it from uh, being in his overload anyway. Yeah, actual gear has high movement and gives you teleporting movement because of Overclocker. You obtain this by defeating Normal Baal, and as daunting as that sounds, even a 10 million stat unit can potentially kill Baal, let alone a 20 million stat unit. And as it stands, Usalia is actually one of the better units for doing this anyway, so if you're doing this setup with Usalia and Kelia, you're in a good position to farm these from Baal. Now, Usalia herself... Uh, she takes re uh, she takes reduced damage or makes uh, adjacent allies take reduced damage. We're not so worried about this. More more uh, importantly, precious people increases attack adjustment uh, by 20% per adjacent ally unit. This isn't an attack buff like Supreme Curry. This is attack adjustment, which is a buff to attacking attacking stats regardless of which you use doing damage calcs. Also, similarly, Kelia gains 100% attack adjustment during revenge mode. We also have Assault Attack. So again, the further we move, the more damage we deal. Bullying increases damage to lower level enemy units, or what it doesn't say is it also works if it's tied. So a level 9999 works on everything. And Magic Bundle... This is actually an attack adjustment boost, and it does work with overloads. Unstable power grants extra stats, but decreases stats every turn after the first. We're trying to win in one turn anyway. 50% stats for one slot is a lot. You can obtain this via Carol World on Demon Lord difficulty or above. To the death increases, atta increases attack adjustment during revenge mode, but decreases defense adjustment. It's a bit dangerous if you're trying to survive past one turn, but if you're winning in one turn, it doesn't matter too much. This was suggested as a po as a possible ability to use, but I believe um, Alpha Lampo said that that wasn't part of the main build. But I'm, I prefer to use this. Kenta Bender. This is available from Carol World and should be available on any difficulty. This going is the gender of the unit, in this case turns Isalia male, and the reason for this is there's a squad full of units with bodyguards, which is a common ability of Girl Lahal, and this gives 5% attack adjustment to males in the same squad and it stacks. So a squad full of units with bodyguards means that being male is an advantage. Also have Bounty Hunter, also from Kara World, also available on any difficulty, increases damage to uh, to invaders. Unconditional Love is a common ability of Artina, so you can spread that via Carol World on any difficulty. Increase attack adjustment, but you gain no money. Purgatory increases critical damage, again, 
we're going to be in revenge mode, we will always hit criticals. Minor scarcity, increased attack adjustment at the cost of reduced mana gain. This is actually available as a one-time bonus of Inner Dark Demise Destroyer's Beckon. That's how I suggest getting it in the first place. Otherwise, it's available on uh, overall difficulty or above of Carawald, or you can also spread it with a unit that already has it on those same difficulties. And critical point, again, uh, common ability of Peta. Now, if you don't have access to DLC, you might want to use something more like this where instead of critical point, gender bender and uh, and unconditional love we've got desperation which increases, increases attack adjustment but decreases defense adjustment and convert force which increases stats by 25% at the cost of setting your elemental resistances to minus 50% Again, this is bad if you're trying to live past the first turn, but it's otherwise... Uh, but if you're trying to win one turn, it's a really good source of stats. Now, the reason we didn't use this on the DLC version is if, if you have access to DLC, your support units can have Charismatic Novice, a common ability of a measle, which gives 10% stats to adjacent allies and this stack, so you can have a whole load of units around Usalia give her extra stats. Now, alter some alternatives incl include having... Eclipse Power, which you get from defeating Carnage Dark, and this allows you to permanently steal a very tiny percentage of stats from item world bosses, invaders, mystery room enemies, uh, proto-dark death, and the uh, overlords of research netherworlds. You could also uh, use something like Kamikaze, which is an ability of um, Zoroken. Despite what it says, it actually requires that your speed is strictly higher than the target, but when it works, it doubles critical damage. Now, I'm not going to count on being faster, but if you expect to be faster, this is an incredibly good ability. Now, this isn't necessarily the... Now, I believe... This one is close to, but not necessarily the exact build uh, Elfo Lampo used. But I believe Elfo Lampo didn't use to the death. Uh, this is just a non-DLC equivalent. And I'm going to use this just to demonstrate that you can do this without DLC. Now on Christo, oh by the way, it's only as, yeah, I've got similar equipment. Professional, I've got other int based weapon, actual gear, movement gear. Christo, ability wise, not very much here. Tactician, gives 100% accuracy to adjacent allies. And unlike with Land Decimator, this will work properly with Murmur of Rage. It will get 100% accuracy. And the side effect of this is that it prevents Nyx, which otherwise reduce your damage and cancel out criticals. Spirit of Ally, as we mentioned before, the higher his int is, the stronger adjacent allies are. Angler Song is a unique ability of Celestial Hosts. And this gives 25% uh, attack adjustment to adjacent allies. We want Chriso next to Asalia anyway, so this is good to have. Evil Eye is the unique Chimera ability. Decreases stats of enemies on the map. This helps if you want to use Kamikaze, or just helps weaken enemies anyway. Curse Dance, unique Sorcerer ability. If you don't have DLC, you won't be able to use this. It's not required, it's just a small bonus. Again, Explorer increases uh, the cost of mystery rooms appearing if you've deployed this unit. Using Violence and Unstable Power for extra stats. Unstable Power, mentioned before, get via Carol World. Violence it increases stats but decreases experience gained. You get this from Void Dark. And Curse Medic Novice, as mentioned before, common ability of a measle. Going to pretend that I don't have DLC, guess it's just to get it can be done without. 
Support units have all got, uh, well, like, equipment-wise, this movement gear. If you want to run a Sardio with other units, um, Petter's an option. So I've got similar stuff on Petter. I won't be using her for this, but I'll note her as an option. Meta's daughter increases attack adjustment of um, adjacent overlords. Killian's an overlord, Usaila's an overlord, so she works well. Ingersong, Evil Eye, Cursed Dance, Explorer, Charismatic Novice, same deal basically. Pretty much the same deal on other support units. Got bodyguards on this unit because she's part of Usaila's squad. I'm going to pretend that I don't have DLC. Again, let's pretend we don't have DLC. I've got Licensed Caregiver on the Maid. Not used for this setup, but it's useful to have. It's a common Maid ability. Allows you to use items as in an AoE. So on five, uh, five units instead of one. And efficient work. She can use an item without using up her turn. If you don't have DLC, you will need the maid for afternoon tea, which is a unique maid skill to give Kilio an extra turn. Um, anyone else is just going to be there to be adjacent to Asalia, and that's not even going to be needed for much of this. I will show the setup in action with Kilia as he's supposed to be, and then I'll show uh, without uh, DLC abilities when I'm doing the uh, when I'm actually showing it in the item world. So very basic version without even using buff spells. Other than this of curry. So that was with um, veteran support. So enemy strength is set to 20 stars. So a few notes about this. The usual thing is that Isalia is the only unit that needs to be strong for this, though having Kilia strong as a backup attacker helps. And having Christo strong helps as well. So you don't need multiple strong units, but it helps. Um, because this does work properly with 100% accuracy effects, we don't need to worry about missing. Mum of Rage is actually very strong for a full map attack. Because we're using an overload, Isalia's turn is free to still attack, for example, with squad attack. And um, because We've always got Usalia and Kilia in revenge mode. They can each use squad attack once per map, assuming they're in separate squads. Uh, this also means Usalia makes for a good boss killer. Usalia, being a monster, means she can Mega Kang onto people, so she's easy to master subclasses on. And as mentioned before, Usalia is actually a really good unit for killing Baal, so she's a good unit to have strong anyway. Unfortunately, Kilia is a unique humanoid which makes him more difficult to master subclasses on and uh, also because we're casting a supreme curry 10 times that's a lot of animations even the animations off the the basic animation for a buff happening still adds up a lot but this is still a really good setup, and honestly, I think this is a better setup than the Land Decimator one. Now I'm going to go into an item. I'm going to go into an already leveled item just to demonstrate that this works even after enemies get really strong. Now, if I was doing this properly, I should move Italia far away after I've done this and surround her with um, with a load of units, but it's actually not going to be necessary to do so. 
So yeah, I'm using int-based weapons on Kilia and Usalia because it works well with uh, Christo's superlative ally. But you could get away with with fewer stats if you're going attack-based because the attack buff of um, of Supreme Curry actually stacks with normal buff spells. Though there is still an overall cap of plus 200% to a stat, shared between plus 100% from plus percent stats effects, plus 100% from a buff, and um, unknown for miscellaneous buffs like Supreme Curry. So I'm just going to use the overload as is. So yeah, let's go. Hit it a bit differently here. Yeah, I could move this far, far away and find a bit more units, but don't really need to. I will do so if I'm facing stronger things. But yeah, this clears maps really reliably. I'm not going to bother with this mystery room with this setup. Because I'm not deploying uh, the additional uh, support unit, I might not get uh, I might not get mystery rooms that often. So if you want more mystery rooms, just deploy more. Or if you want mystery rooms more reliably, deploy more units with. Explorer. I see more mystery room rooms anyway, so I should get it. Um, um, buffing killing such like I'm not attacking with him because I. I might decide I need him, or if something lives, he can clean up. Oh, this is useful. So here's a mystery room. I'm gonna position it slightly differently this time. Here I will actually deploy extra units to survive Sadia. I, mean, I could move aside further than I'm actually moving her, but not really necessary. So that wiped most of the map. Squad attack, defeats Mel. Particularly interesting. Oh, I suppose I could lift level fish. Okay, control tied here. Uh, let's try it again. Now I'll just do my usual layout. Okay, we have this. Hang on, I want to talk to this one. I'm going to do this as a full map wipe. 
Unless we were, um, some of the enemies in this are slightly tougher, so this will be a, a bit more of a test of the setup. Swim already. I mean, I've, I've only done five floors here, but. Yeah, the setup works really well, actually. Oops. So, again, uh, if you have Petter and hence have access to uh, veteran support, you use that instead of um, uh, you use that instead of needing to use the maid on Kelia. So the boss will probably survive this. My kids. Absolutely fine. <laughs> it won't survive that. And that is the setup in action. Now, something I forgot to show before. Kilia leading the relief party just because it's a squad for 20 units with at least 225 squad members for maximum squad attack damage though we didn't actually use Kilia's squad attack at all there. Uh, Isalia leading foot soldier squad because it can hold 20 units also with at least 225 prisoners in there if you're not stacking bodyguards on a load of units and you don't care about squad attack, you could instead put her in the flatty squad, which would potentially give her 25% stats. Anyway, this was the uh, 
Usalia and Killia combo method of clearing item world floors. It works. Um, it works really, really well. Um, like if you want a way of doing this with just one main attacker, yeah, do this. Forget the Sage version. Uh, again, thank you to Alpha Lampo for this idea. I hope this video has been useful for people, and thank you for watching.